Making a video today on how to uh, change your driver's side coolant flange. This is on a, a 2003 Volkswagen GTI. The engine is a AWP. I've actually I've done this repair once before. The uh, the original one failed at around 120,000 miles or so. Uh, I was able to know what the part was by just googling uh, driver's side coolant leak. And apparently it's a, a pretty uh, common problem because I quickly found it like that. I replaced the part originally with a uh, with uh, this brand of product. It was it was seven dollars. I thought I was getting a pretty good deal. Um, unfortunately, it lasted only for about two months. And uh, so this time I went all the way and uh, and bought the Volkswagen product. You know the original one lasted about one hundred twenty thousand miles, and I'm, I'm hoping this one will, will last for the for the rest of the life of the car. The, uh, the, the guy at the dealership said that when you're buying coolant parts, as they're important, you should buy the Volkswagen part. Could be true or could be a good statement employee, sales employee, but in my experience, the, uh, the cheaper one didn't end up being cheaper because here I am doing the repair again. The, uh, the second time, I really didn't want to believe that it was the uh, side engine, uh, side coolant engine coolant flange again. Because, you know, I wanted to think that, you know, my repair uh, couldn't have led to anything else. And, and actually, it actually presented in a kind of a strange way um, with the, uh, I was only leaking coolant when the car stopped, which was kind of strange. And, and it, it made it kind of interesting to, to find the, the problem sometimes. But it presented itself, or, or how I first saw it was, as you can see down here, this, this hex head uh, right there, round nut. I saw drips forming on it and dropping down. And I was kind of able to follow, follow it up and see that it was blowing over this black curly Q cord and over this uh, aluminum pipe. And I was able to trace it through this window here to uh, to this. Um, well, I'll keep working on my, my filming skills here, but. To the yeah the, the bolt 10 millimeter bolt down there that is used to attach the side engine coolant flange so I wish you good luck finding your coolant link the first step to, to doing this repair is you need to drain your coolant you need to open up your reservoir so that you can release the vacuum that'll form as you're dropping the coolant out of the bottom and then to Drain your coolant, you can see I've already started. You simply uh, uh, pull out and, and loosen this, uh, yeah, spout right there and drain it. Um, the next step is dispose, this is good timing, disposing the, uh, the coolant. And it's important that when you're disposing coolant, you don't, the main objective is not to leave any puddles or pools anywhere because if animals do ingest um, coolant, uh, the ethylene glycol is the active ingredient, and it's uh, it's metabolized or toxic to animals. It'll cause uh, kidney failure. What's an interesting fun fact is that the same enzyme that breaks down ethylene glycol into toxic metabolites um, will also break down alcohols or ethanol. And so, if one accidentally ingests coolant or ethylene glycol, one of the treatments is to actually chug alcohol and uh, thereby competitively inhibit the, the breakdown of ethylene glycol and, and kind of reduce the accumulation of its toxins and thereby like preventing um, kidney toxicity. So there's a little fun fact for you. So I'm gonna, I believe you can take coolant to places and they'll responsibly recycle it for you. So that's a great idea. So our coolant was responsibly disposed and will harm no little animals. Um, the first time we did this repair, I watched a video made by this gentleman and it was very helpful. He was a professional mechanic in a, in a nice shop with professional tools. And he was able to take the, uh, the flange off in, in less than seven minutes of the video, which was really awesome. It's gonna take me longer to do that. Uh, but I thought it would be neat to kind of make a video of a guy doing this repair who's just a, a dude in his parking lot with uh, you know a, a modest bag of tools so that's that's the goal of today's video 
and uh, we're gonna get started here shortly. So uh, another step in this repair is if, if you have the uh, stock air box, you're gonna wanna remove that and get it out of the way so you can actually see you know, what you're working on and, and get in there. I, I, I'm lucky enough to have a cold air intake, so uh, I don't have that problem. Now you'll see how to remove that in, in countless other videos on YouTube. You also wanna kinda clean up your working area so you can access things early. So I, uh, I went ahead and disconnected this to give myself a bigger window. Next step we're gonna do is, is really you simply just unplug things from the coolant flange. And so we'll start with uh, this temperature sensor here, pulling out this clip. And just lifting it out. And then uh, we'll just use a vice grip to, to clamp these things down and pull them out of the way so that we can um, unbolt this flange. Uh, another thing to note is uh, there are different uh, temperature sensors. I believe an older sensor is a, is a black sensor and uh, my understanding is that those have a higher tendency to fail so if you have a black one you do want to replace it with a, a green temperature sensor. The, uh, the gentleman at the dealership also asked me if I had replaced the gasket for this and uh, I told him I hadn't and uh, he said it was a good idea to do so and so I I uh, asked him how much it would cost and he actually just gave me the part so um, it seemed like this, that makes it seem as though it's a, a genuine act and a, a legitimate thing you want to do while you're, while you're in here so I'd recommend ordering or picking up that part as well. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate loosening one of these clamps with one hand and a vice grip. And we'll see if oh, I can actually do that. Pretty neat. <laughs> Alright. So we just uh, loosened it and we backed it off a little bit so it's no longer clasping down and holding the, the tubing in place and we'll just do that on the other um, three components. Um, some coolant's gonna gonna drain out. In the other video the guy demonstrates using an air compressor to, to blow out the extra stuff. Uh, I don't extra coolant. I don't have an air compressor so I don't have that luxury. My hands are just gonna get a little wet. All right, so now I've, I've taken all the hoses off. One, uh, two, and then three. That one was kind of a little punk on me, but got it. And I just used uh, vice grips or pliers, so that was a simple and easy repair. Or task. Now I'm going to uh, remove the flange itself by um, using a 10 millimeter socket wrench to this bolt where you can see my black finger in the darkness and then there's another one up here you might just have to take my word for it my filming skills are proving to be less than adequate so yeah so there ha ah, we got it so we're just gonna take those two bolts out now with 10 millimeter so I recognize my, my filming was, was crappy on showing you the nuts, but you know I told you there are two nuts. You can see the original part where the two nuts are, and I, I have high confidence that you'll, that you'll find them. All right, so our, our flange is back on there now, which is all good news. Um, I realized I forgot to give you one helpful detail. Disconnecting this doodad. Like this doodad right here to here makes all the difference in the world in accessibility. I'm not sure that this light's working out too well for you, so let me try. So I just I just made this disconnect right here. And that really made it a lot easier to access that, that top nut, which was difficult before otherwise. So now that the flange is back on there, we're just gonna plug everything back up. All right, so we're all back together now. I got the, the hoses on, clamps in the right place, um, bolts are snug tight, got the, the temperature sensor in, and also replaced the new gasket and a clip holding all that together. So we're gonna, gonna close the uh, drainage on the bottom here. All right. So when we put our coolant in, it doesn't just flow out. <laughs> and uh, 
Other thing to note is that um, when you're replacing the coolant, you need to use the Volkswagen G12, and really all I know is that's because they say so. And uh, an another additionally interesting note is that mixing the two coolants can cause uh, a big problems, which is interesting. Um, I think uh, one of the reasons I heard of that was I think it can cause some coagulation and uh, clog your system. Um, it could be wrong, but regardless, it's not a good idea to mix your coolants. If you do so, you want to drain it and then put your G12 DI water 5050 back in. So we're gonna, gonna put some coolant in this. So yeah, I'm putting coolant in here, and this is I've already I've already mixed up half and half. Pretty exciting stuff. And it's gonna take a while to cycle. You've got air in the system now, and so you're gonna you're gonna put in coolant, but it's your the level you have now is gonna go down as it as it goes into the engine when you run it, and then to uh, let the system breathe and and blow off some of the air that's in there that doesn't need to be. You you have your heater on high while you run the car, but of course you wanna monitor your coolant levels while you do so, and then you also wanna roll around with some coolant and DI water in your trunk for a little bit just in case something goes wrong with with your repair or it settles abnormally. And really, um, that's this uh, side engine coolant flange repair. I, I hope that I made it look, <laughs> hope that I made it look easy. It is, it is a simple task for someone with some simple mechanical knowledge and it'll, it'll save you a buck here or there. And it's also just nice to fix your stuff. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and, and I wish you good luck in your repairs.